In this video, we are going to work through a linear programming solution, particularly as it relates to staffing. So if you need a moment to read the question, feel free to pause the video and resume once you're ready, but otherwise we will read the question together. So you are the director of a technology support call center and are responsible for staffing. The center is open from 8 a.m. until midnight uh, you have monitored the usage of the center at various times of day and determined the following number of computer consultants are required. And the following number is those that are presented here in this table. Two types of com computer consultants can be hired, full-time and part-time. The full-time consultants work for eight consecutive hours starting at either 8 a.m., noon, or 4 p.m. And full-time consultants are paid $17.50 per hour. Part-time consultants can be hired to work any of the four shifts listed in the table and are paid $15 an hour. So part-time consultants can either start at 8 a.m., noon, 4 p.m., 8 p.m., 4 p.m., or 8 p.m. An additional requirement is that during every time period, there must be at least two full-time consultants on duty for every part-time consultant on duty. You need to determine how many full-time and part-time consultants should work each shift to meet the requirements while minimizing cost. Okay, so this is a relatively straightforward staffing problem. So let's first go ahead and define our decision variables. But before we even do that, why don't we draw what this looks like? So let's just draw a little table here. So we have our start and this is at 8 a.m. And we'll just map the various start times that people can have. So we have one at 8 a.m. This is noon. Let's make this a little bit closer. 4 p.m. Again, that's a little too far. 8 p.m. And we'll just put our end time here. And this is midnight. So we're told in the question that full-time consultants can start at 8 a.m., noon, or 4 p.m. and work for uh, eight hours at a time. So we'll let this blue color. So full-time consultants those who start at 8 a.m would work until 4 p.m they can also start at noon and work until 8 p.m right noon until 8 and they can also start at 4 p.m and work until midnight So just for sake of keeping this clear, we'll label this as full-time one, full-time two, and full-time three. Now, we also have part-time consultants, and our part-time consultants can work in any of the, they can start at any of the following. So they can start at eight and work till noon, they can start at noon and work till four. They can start at four and work till eight. And they can start at eight and work till midnight. Now you don't have to draw it out like this, but I find that this is gonna help us later. So I'm just gonna label these part-time one, part-time two, part-time three, and part-time four, just to signify the different times that our part-time staff can work. So now that we've done that, and we have our little chart here that shows when our individuals can start working and how long their shifts run for, let's write our decision variables. So let's let fi equal the fi equal the number of full-time 
consultants. Who start at time I, where I is equal to, um, we'll say, uh, one, two, or three. And of course, where one is equal to 8 a.m., two is equal to noon, and three is equal to 4 p.m. Okay. Then we're going to say let pi, uh, we'll say pj. pj equal the number of part-time consultants who start at time j where j is equal to one, two, three, or four. And again, this is where one is equal to 8 a.m., two is equal to noon, three is equal to 4 p.m. and 4 is equal to 8 p.m. Right? This is where they start. So as you see, P4 starting at 8 p.m. for our part-time consultants, right? So this is where this um, little chart can help us. <clears throat> so now we need to identify our objective function. And in our question, we are told that we are looking to minimize the cost. So min z is equal to, well, we have full-time consultants who are paid at $17.50 an hour, and they work for eight hours consecutive. So $17.50 times eight times our decision variable here for full-time staff times FI plus our part-time who earn $15 an hour and work for four hours at a time plus 15 times four times uh, PJ. And we can break this out a little bit if we wanted to. So 1750 times eight is equal to 140 times, what do we have here? We have F1 plus F2 plus F3, right? Those are all the variables of FI plus 15 times four so this is 60 times 
P1 plus P2 plus P3, whoops, plus P3 plus P4. Okay, and we could take this one step further if we really wanted to write it the long way, and we'd say 140 F1 plus 140 F2 plus 140 F3 plus 60 P1 plus 60 P2 plus 60 P 60 P3. plus 60 P4. Okay, so that's our objective function. It's probably nicer just to leave it in its original form here, but uh, if you wanna write it out the long way, then you should feel free. And then our constraints are as followed. So we need to have a number of consultants on duty required from 8 a.m. to noon to be at least six. And who are our staff members that are on duty from 8 a.m. to noon? Well, we either have a full-time staff person or a part-time staff person or both. So we're going to say our the 8 a.m. to noon this is our first constraint. So we're saying that F1 plus P1 must be greater than or equal to six, right? To have at least six consultants on duty, we need to have full-time staff plus part, full-time staff plus part-time staff greater than or equal to six. Now, during our shift from noon to 4 p.m., and I'll just highlight this region right here, noon to 4 p.m., who are our possible people that are on duty? Well, we have the people who started at 8 a.m. who are full-time staff and are working that eight-hour shift. We have our full-time staff who started at noon who are working from noon until eight, and we have our part-time staff. So noon, noon until 4 p.m. We have full-time staff. These are the people who started at 8 a.m. and are working till 4 p.m. We have full-time staff who started at noon, and we have part-time staff who started at noon and we notice that this must be greater than or equal to eight. From 4 p.m. until 8 p.m., we need to have at least 12 staff on duty. And from 4 p.m. until 8 p.m., what do we notice? Well, we have the full-time staff who started at noon and are working till 8 p.m. We have the full-time staff who started at 4 p.m. and are working till midnight. And of course, we have our part-time staff who started at 4 p.m. So we have F2 plus F3 plus P3 must be greater than or equal to the number of staff that are required, which is 12. And then finally, from 8 p.m. to midnight, We need at least six staff. And from 8 p.m. until midnight, we have our individuals, our full-time staff, who started at 4 p.m. and are working till midnight. And we have our part-time staff who started at 8 p.m. So we have F3 plus P4 must be greater than or equal to the number that we need, which is six. Okay, so these are our uh, beginning of our constraints. Now we're also told that there is an additional requirement that during every time period, there must be at least two full-time consultants on duty for every part-time consultant that is on duty. 
So this is, we're going to have to break down um, these constraints for full-time versus part-time. So we're going to say F versus P, and this is at 8 a.m. till noon. And we're told that we need at least two full-time consultants on duty for every part-time consultant. So we are going to write the constraint as followed. So for every <clears throat> consultant, for every full-time, we're gonna say that this must be greater than two part-time. So two P one. For full time versus part time from noon until 4 p.m., well, we have F1 plus F2. This is going to be greater than or equal to 2P2. For full time versus part time from 4 p.m., until 8 p.m. we have F2 plus F3 greater than or equal to 2P3 and I should probably put this in capital letters here there we go just to be consistent and then our full-time versus part-time um, at 8 p.m. to midnight Well, this is just going to be F3 is greater than or equal to 2P4. Okay. <clears throat> now, now that we have these written out, we can also put these in standard notation. So all we're going to say here is that F1 minus 2P1 must be greater than or equal to 0. F1 plus F2 minus 2p2 must be greater than or equal to 0. f2 plus f3 minus 2p3 greater than or equal to 0. And f3 minus 2p4 must be greater than or equal to 0. So that is putting our um, constraints into standard notation and that's going to help us when we get to Microsoft Excel which we will do in the next video. So that will do it for this video but stay tuned for the solution in Microsoft Excel. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped to make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.